Hey y'all, CB here again at NBS Welding. Uh, actually working on a job for my buddy uh, related to another job that I recently did that uh, might not be any video up on it for a while. But uh, before I get to that, I got a quick job I got to knock out in the shop here with some welding. Uh, let's take a look at what we got. Dirt bike exhaust. Uh, they, they're probably going to race this weekend, so we need to get this fixed up. And this is what we're dealing with. She's just about completely broken off. I'm going to put some 030 solid MIG wire in the Arc Captain MIG 205 MP. And one of the things that uh, I would very often do, uh, and a technique I want to mention, because this is something that people are going to run into at home a lot, I think. What we've got right here is something that's thin. Um, it's definitely got rust on it. We can power brush it, but we don't want to grind too much. You know, when you have thick steel and you have rust, you would take a grinding wheel and grind it away, and the rust wouldn't be an issue at all. You don't want to do that on something like this exhaust because there's not a whole lot of steel there to be grinding away. We can power brush it, and, and I'll power brush it, but... Uh, you're not going to get it super duper clean. Now, I don't feel like this is clean enough to, to TIG weld. Uh, I'm going to MIG weld it. I don't think we need the high quality, uh, super smooth uh, bead that you would get by TIG welding it. And I don't think we want to put that much time into it. That's not necessary. For this dirt bike exhaust, we need this welded up where it's going to hold structurally. And uh, since this is something that guys would run into at home, like on mower decks and exhausts and things that you weld, the technique I want to mention that you would use on something like this a lot of times with a solid wire MIG is you would jog the trigger. You're going to... You're going to weld the thing together uh with a, a a flurry of of lots and lots of tack welds and why you you would think okay why would you do that well by having your machine set really hotter than you need it you'll have better luck blasting through your corrosion and rust and dirt uh this is going to have a bunch of carbon because it's an exhaust uh, you need a little bit of extra heat to blast through that stuff and, and get her welding, okay? With that heat being higher, you're, you're, go you're not going to be able to pull the trigger and just run a bead. If you do that, you're going to be melting the material. And if you can just pull the trigger and run a bead, if it's clean enough, turn it down that low and do it. But, the likelihood of you getting a good weld being able to do that on something that's really rusted, uh, you know, it's tough. At least in the beginning, I think you're going to want to run a little more heat than you need and jog the trigger. And one of the things that makes the Arc Captain MiG-205 MP extra good at doing that is the fact that you can pre-flow and post-flow your shield gas. Meaning that I can have a little gas coming out of my gun before I start welding and it'll continue to come out after I start welding. I can't even do that with my Millermatic 252s. The only time gas comes out of that thing is when I pull the trigger and when I let off, I'm not getting any gas. So, in effect, what I can do with the MiG-205 MP is... I'll never stop blowing shield gas into the weld zone. But I'll be intermittently jogging the trigger and, and welding and letting it cool and welding and letting it cool and welding and letting it cool. Now, another thing you could do with a 205 MP is you could run this on pulse. Uh, I'm probably not going to do that. I might play with it. I don't know. But I just wanted to mention that that is a definite advantage when... You want to use a, a t technique like jogging the trigger, 
but you don't want to have uh, portions in time where you're not getting enough shield gas. And I'll tell you when you'll really notice that being an issue is sometimes when you're MIG welding stuff, especially if it's dirty and you're jogging the trigger or you've run a bead and stopped, at the very last second, you'll see a, a porous area and sometimes even like a gonzo of this ugly metal that, that comes out into your very last little piece of keyhole. That's a spot where you heated the steel but didn't continue to shield it long enough while it was cooling and the molten material was exposed to the atmosphere and, you know, you don't want that. When, when your material is molten, it needs to be shielded by the shield gas and not exposed to the contaminants of the atmosphere. So I'll set you up on a tripod and we'll fix this. So I'm welding this up, and one of the things about the 205 MP that everybody thought was interesting, including me in the beginning, is it talks to you. When you got it hooked up wrong, it tells you to hook it up right. If you've got the, the wire connected on the negative and it's supposed to be on the positive, it tells you. Well, when I was welding on this rusty exhaust, it kept telling me that there was a short circuit between the welding torch and the workpiece, and it was doing that because... The way I'm jogging the trigger on this rusty metal and the ground's not going through real well, uh, it probably thought there was a problem when there wasn't. And it welded it great, but it annoyed me that it kept talking. And it made me, for the first time, wish that it did not talk. Uh, I'll give you an example of the thing talking, but I want to show you how I found out that you can turn that voice off. I contacted my guy with our captain and asked him if I could just turn that voice off because I don't need it anymore to tell me how to hook up the machine. I'm used to hooking it up now. And he showed me how to go into engineering mode and shut that off. And that's something I wanted to share with y'all. Uh, let me play the clip of it talking. Please connect the adapter to the positive terminal. Please connect the adapter to the positive terminal. Please connect the adapter to the positive terminal. The ad please connect the adapter. The adapter polarity is reversed. Please connect the adapter to the positive terminal. The adapter polarity is reversed. Please connect the, the please connect the adapter to the positive terminal. So the information on this uh, is available in the manual. Uh, you would turn it on. You press this upper left button. You press the upper left button again. You're now in engineering mode. And you see uh, the one we want is PO7. That's the voice. And I hit mode. Uh, it, it goes back to PO1. I get back to PO7. Uh, use the knob on the right. Flip that off. And hit sync. Uh, when you hit send, it goes and returns to the regular welding mode, and it doesn't talk anymore. I just turned the voice off. Uh, I think it's awesome that there are so many things that are adjustable in engineering mode. There's a lot more I want to learn about this machine, uh, but I'm testing it here to see if it's going to talk anymore, and it does not talk anymore. So if I want it to go back to talking, I can turn that back on. Uh, if I wanted to shut up, I can leave it off. Uh, it's just awesome that you got that option. Hey y'all, CB here, the no BS welder here at NBS Welding. I'm wanting to let y'all know, uh, we got t-shirts for sales. Uh, if, if you'd like to support the NBS Welding YouTube channel, send Tina an email at nbswelding at aol.com. Uh, go to the NBS Welding YouTube channel. Check out the content. And in the uh, in all new video descriptions, there's links to our Amazon storefront and our affiliates. So you can check out uh, the products that I use and endorse.